it's Ruth Rowland with Tommy Jackson's Fiddle Fills from the Hank Williams recording of the Hank Williams classic, Your Cheatin' Heart. While I'm teaching you these fills, we'll also look into um, how he might have constructed them and how you can make them fit your hand better if they're a little bit of a stretch and how to transpose them to the key of your singer. If this interests you, subscribe for more classic fiddle parts. Your Cheatin' Heart is basically built for a call and response fill like the echo fill or the reflection fill. He sings, uh, your cheating heart. Right, and the, the response is basically, your cheating heart, only on the fiddle. The way it was built, the reason you can tell it was built this way is there are long notes. He holds long notes regularly. Um, your cheating heart. Heart, right, is a long note that's a perfect place for a fill to come in, and those come like clockwork every couple of bars. Also, it starts on the second beat one, two, three, four, one. Then it lands on the long note, and it's time for the fill. And the fill can basically imitate whatever the vo voice did because the voice didn't start till the second beat. Does that make sense? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, right? Since since the melody itself didn't start until the second beat, there's time for the melody to land on the next downbeat and then the fill can come in. This is just fascinating. And indeed, Tommy Jackson did choose the echo fill for his fills. He uses double strings for all his fills. And I'm, I'm going to teach you, uh, I pulled out a melody line from the fills. So I'll teach you that single line first, and then we'll go back and add the extra notes. I'll play each fill twice, once for you to listen and the next time for you to play along. So let's get started. Your cheating heart. Ready and play. This one is the trickiest one of them all. It starts up bow and then a fast down bow, and then the rest of the bar up bow before landing on the, the last note down bow. I'll show you again. Okay, so up, down, up, up, down. Okay, a little bit slower. Um, ready? and play. Good, and it's important to use fourth fingers because when he adds in the extra notes, he adds notes uh, on the A string, so you can't use open A and a note on the A string, uh, a finger on the A string. You can't play both of those together at the same time. So. Um, one more time, uh, ready, and play. Four, four. Okay, going on. We'll make you weak. Ready, and play. Good. You cry and cry. Ready and play. And try to sleep. Ready 
and play. Good. And those just go right where um, right where we place them during the long notes. Uh, you let him the let the vocal part land on the downbeat, and then you pick up from there. Good. So let's add in the extra notes. Uh, and again, the first one is the hardest. So um, this goes over a C chord. The notes of the C chord are C, E, and G. And Tommy plays a C along with the fill for most of the fill. Uh, right, the C is A, B, C. That note is called C. But, but the C, the note C, is actually part of the melody. So when we get to that C, right, it, you can't use the drone and the, the melody C at the same time. Or I guess you could play it just a separate note. But he chose to go over to the E string, open E, since E is another note in the C chord. Makes sense? Tommy Jackson does basically the same fill for all three verses. Um, sometimes he does a little variation on them. Um, this first fill, sometimes he, got, do, he does this. which is a little bit easier. Uh, if you want to make it even easier, you can use this C, uh, low C, middle C, instead of this C on the A string. Use the C on the G string. So that will uh, it eliminate this stretch between the fourth finger and the second finger um, if you do it. Right? And you can either go uh, or and use either the C on the G string or open G. I kind of prefer the open G. It feels better. Um, so again, that film. string you hardly notice them that they're single strings it's still a very impressive sound so um, those are just a couple of options for you for this gnarly first fill all right uh, next one this is straightforward this Fifth, um, this is over an F chord, and the notes of the F chord are F, A, and C. Of those notes, um, he played F in the melody and harmonized it with the C for the first two notes. He could have used an F, right? And you hear the difference in the sound. He also likes the the fifth because he could slide up into it and slide down out of it um, which has a very mournful sound sometimes a fifth is hard to get in tune you really need to have your fat fat finger uh, sitting across the strings this way if if it's diagonal at all, then one note is higher than the other, uh, which is not good, uh, especially for a fifth. Fifth should really uh, be pure. <laughs> People can tell when fifths are out of tune. Okay, uh, sliding down out of it. 
might be a little tricky to go straight to this from the fifth to so you know if you don't want the hassle of that you can just use open a and that's a perfectly good harmony let's do this together ready and play got it okay the next one Basically, uh, it's over a G chord. He just holds that G on the D string, a, a D, E, F, G, down the whole time. And you'll notice I'm sliding, he slides. Uh, you can do whatever you want to with that. Okay, the next one, the last one, is another one where this stretch comes into play the fourth finger and the second finger. Uh, if it's too much for you, this is over the C chord. Um, you can use the open A um, and uh, you can just play the open A by itself. You can do what we did before and just take the C down to the G string. and either play it the whole time or um, do because Tommy puts a little melody with it you could play the same melody or you could do a different melody, uh, which I think is easier. Just open G instead of the first finger. Doesn't matter to the tune and uh, you just do whatever is most comfortable or whatever you like the sound of better. So that's how to customize it, how to add the double stops. What if you need to play it in a different key. What if your singer sings it in G? Say you're um, accompanying Patsy Cline and uh, she sing, sings it in G. Well, if it, if it really is the difference between C and G, you could just see C and G are right across the string from each other. So you could potentially just do it up a string. But it's a little bit shrill. It doesn't have the same um, mellow <laughs> overtones as the uh, original Tommy Jackson solo. So uh, you could then take it down an octave. Um, you'll ha you'd have to put different voicing with it. If you wanted to do a lower drone, uh, you'd have the same problem that we had on the E string. Where on the E string we had to do that a single note because that the drone became a melody note and we didn't have anything higher than the E string. We don't have anything lower than the G string. And we could play the open open D along with it, that's fine. Or we could use a, an upper drone. Um, of B. B is also in the G chord. So you can do this type of fill in any key. Just play the tune that you want and figure out how to harmonize it for if you want to do double strings. You may not even want to do double strings. So these are um, how he does all the fills uh, at the beginning of each verse. He also takes his solo on the last half of the verse um, and he does pretty much pretty similar things which he can do because he did basically the melody uh, for his fills. So he, he does pretty similar things for his solo, but there is even more difficult voicing and some little sweet um, 
tricks and turns that he does, which make it worthwhile covering on a different video. If you're interested in that, I will happily do a video. Just drop me a note in the comments. So we've covered the fills, a little bit about the construction of them, how to customize them to fit your hand and how to transpose them to the key that your singer sings in. If you enjoyed learning this classic fiddle part, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when the next one posts. See you there.